Hi, this is Priyanka Tiwari. I welcome you all in the next session of Standard 9 Maths Chapter 5, that is Introduction to Euclid's Geometry. The word geometry means to measure the earth. Geometry is made up of two words, that is geo and metrian. Geo means the earth and metrian means to measure. The word geometry means to measure the earth. A Greek mathematician, Thales is credited with giving the first known proof. The first known proof which is given by Thales was a circle is bisected by its diameter. Now Pythagoras was one of the most popular student of Thales. Pythagoras and his group discovered many geometric properties and developed the theory of geometry to a great extent. Let's come to the Euclid's definitions, axioms and postulates. Geometry mainly divided into four basic concepts that is solid, surface, lines and points. Now a solid has three dimensions that is length, breadth and height, height or depth. A surface has two dimension that is length and breadth. A line has only length, it is one dimension. A point has no dimension. Euclid was a teacher of mathematics at Alexandria in Egypt. He collected all known results, compiled them in a series of 13 chapters, each called a book. Euclid gave 23 definitions in chapter 1 called Book of Elements. The compilation was named Elements. A few points of which are listed. A point is that which has no part. The second one, a line is breadthless length. The ends of a line are points. Fourth one, two points determine a straight line. Fifth point is, a surface is that which has length and breadth only. The edges of a surface are lines. A plane is a surface which lies evenly with a straight line on itself. Now students, I'm going to explain you some undefined terms. Okay, now the first one is point. According to definition of point given by Euclid, a point has no part. Dot is not a point but it is a model or representation of a point. Now, point, line and plane, they are taken as undefined terms and we represent them using some imaginary physical model. There are still a few statements and terms which are left undefined. While coming across them, you will notice how obvious they are. This is the very reason that they are left unproved. Euclid divided these assumptions into two types. So one is axioms and second one is postulates. So what are axioms? A self-evident proof which requires no proof is an axiom. Actually, an axiom is a universally accepted rule. Now, Euclid's axioms. The first one, things which are equal to the same thing are equal to one another. Here, we have taken three lines. AB is equal to CD. Yes, and CD is equal to XY. If AB is equal to CD and CD is equal to XY, then AB is equal to XY. Now the second, if equals are added to equals, the wholes are equal. For example, if AB is equal to XY, AB plus CD is equal to XY plus CD. It means that when we are adding CD on both the sides, AB is equal to XY. Okay, that is given. Now when we are adding CD on both the sides, it becomes AB plus CD which is equal to XY plus CD. So AB plus CD becomes AB and XY plus CD becomes XD. 
third one if equals are subtracted from equals the remainder is equal for example ad is equal to xz when we are subtracting cd from both the lines it becomes ab is equal to xy fourth one things which coincide with one another are equal to one another here we have taken two triangles that is abc and pqr when each and every vertices coincides with over each other the whole is greater than the part yes we have taken here c is on the line segment ab first of all we have taken a line segment ab which is of 5 units and then we have taken a c point in between of the line segment that is 3 cm away from point a so ab is always greater than ac now the six things which are double of the same things are equal to one another yes so here line segment ab we have doubled the line segment ab on both the direction so ad is equal to xb things which are half of the same thing are equal to one another now come to the postulates the simple properties which we accept as true now there are five postulates of euclid's a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point as it is shown in the diagram euclid's second postulate a terminated line can be produced indefinitely it is also given in the diagram if we can produce any line any line part from any of the direction for example we are extending at the part at the side of a and at the side of b it can be indefinitely produced now third postulate a circle can be drawn with any center and any radius as in the first circle the center is p yes in the second circle the center is q so a circle can be drawn with any center and with any now postulate 4 all right angles are equal to one another for example angle abc is also of 90 degree and angle pqr is also equal to 90 degree now comes to the fifth postulate if a straight line falling on two straight line makes the interior angle on the same side of it taken together less than two right angles then the two straight line if produced indefinitely meet on that side on which the sum of the angle is less than two right angles so let's come to the explanation part of postulate 5 so let we have taken a line l and m yes it is visible in the figure also the line l and m that is given now a line t yes we have taken a line t which falls on line l and m and intersects line l and m at a and b respectively it is quite visible from the diagram now as a result two interior angles are formed what are these two interior angles angle paq and angle qbr they are formed on one side of line t yes it means that measure of angle paq plus measure of angle qbr is always less than two right angles and which is our euclid's five postulate now some statement is made on an observed phenomena in the universe and if found true then it is termed as postulate a system of axioms is consistent if it is not possible to deduce a statement contradicting any axioms or statement proved based on these axioms euclid's deducted 465 propositions in logical chain using his axioms definition and postulates now let come to the theorem two distinct lines cannot have more than one point in common so we are starting the proof the first is contradiction method it means that we are assuming the exact opposite of what we have to prove so what we are going to assume that the two distinct line l and m intersect at two distinct point say p and 
Q. Since we know that only one line can pass through two distinct points, so our assumption was wrong. So we can say that two distinct lines can have one and only one common point. Let's, now let's move to the example. D, E and F are the three points on the same line as it is visible to the diagram. If E lies between D and F, then prove that DE plus EF is equal to D, DF. Now assume that there is a unique line passing through two distinct points. Yes, we have proved earlier also. So DF is coincided with DE plus EF. So by Euclid's axiom 4, we can say that DE plus EF is equal to DF. Now, the next step is Euclid equivalent version of Euclid's fifth postulates. Okay, in this we are going to study about the equivalent version of fifth postulates of Euclid. So, if two lines are drawn which intersect a third in such a way that the sum of the inner angles on one side is less than two right angles, then the two lines inevitably must intersect each other on that side if extended far enough. So this is the equivalent version of Euclid's fifth postulate. Now this is all about our chapter 5. It is basically a theoretical chapter. Hope you have understood the axioms and postulates. Thank you.